Uh, trucks. It's trucks. How is your truck? My truck? Um, well, it's a little, it's a little cold this morning. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit to, to warm up. Um, I started playing a video game called Into the Breach relatively yes. recently, which is by the makers of FTL. Um, and I've never in my life had a game so comprehensively jack my brain. Yeah, like, I started that game once upon a time and bounced off it for reasons I can't quite place. Yeah. Too stressful or something. I did the opposite of bounce off it. I It was immediately exactly what I wanted. And uh, I uninstalled it two days ago, but my dreams are still entirely parsed in terms of grid-based warfare. <laughs> and like specifically that grid-based warfare. And it's really... Punching insects into buildings. It's really, yeah, it's it's really in, intensely there, and I'm hoping it'll go away because it's always disconcerting when your brain is doing something that you have absolutely no control over. Um, like my my most vivid memories of my mind doing this kind of thing are all very old, like college times. I mm -hmm. Katamari briefly rewired the way that I looked at the world, and also during a period when I was playing a lot of Tetris Attack. Um, and started wanting to move around colored blocks in real life. But at least this one has mostly uh, been confined to Betty time, but it's still like more intense than anything that I've experienced since then. And it's just strange. That's good slash rough. Yeah, gruff. Mm -hmm. I definitely have had to stop playing it in the hopes that this will stop. <laughs> uh, it's also worth mentioning that congratulations are in order as regards to your return to the post office, your triumphant return to yeah. a life of public service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're about Federal to start employment. walking the walk again uh, in terms of the mail and all of the reasons that I think the mail is cool. Um, it'll be intense. I, we'll see if I can hack it. But yeah, we're it's uh, it's about time to get back to work after a long period of convalescence slash torpor. Heck yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I will probably not be as around as much generally, but on the other hand, uh, that will not affect trucks. <laughs> yeah, trucks we'll will probably time. continue to be exactly as much trucks as there has been. I'm liking, uh, the, tr I'm liking the trucks pace. It's controversial, I am aware, but... I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, again, it... I'm particularly not against it anymore. I think that sometimes sustainability is key yeah. in exploring these matters. Um, Controversial among some viewers, though. There are those who wish for more trucks than I understand. But also, nope. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that it's it's probably, like, I think that a reasonably objective observer would have... Uh, expected trucks to wither and die off at this point. <laughs> uh, trucks is forever. Yeah, this much uh, is for sure. So, uh, so this is this we is have a how you get more trucks. It is dealt out to you at this at this rate. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that works out for everybody. So, so, so yeah, we got a thing. We got it. We got we got a subject. We promised it. We haven't we forgotten. Did. We did. We uh, we touted it in a uh, in our recent quote-unquote episode. We're going to talk about talk the about, thing which I don't usually talk about. We're going to talk about religious feelings. Yes. Um, my friend uh, Catherine visited me um, relatively recently, and we had some... Um, we had some it, relatively intense discussions about this comic, at least comic topic. <laughs> we had some relatively intense discussions about this topic, at least intense by my standards... Um, because it's not something that I generally talk about either, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, uh, since Catherine is more of an aspirationally religious person than I am, um, and also because the, there is a sort of vogue of like weird, squishy spirituality 
among the tech bros that she hangs out with. Uh-huh. Um, tech bros and broesses. Uh, that it's, you know, and Catherine wants the real jazz. Catherine thinks that, I mean, I, I, I will not actually uh, recapitulate your viewpoint here because that's not my business, but um, she thinks that it's, you got to do the real thing for it to make any sense. The real um, thing being like the, well, the thing as described in the texts. Organize, religion needs to be organized. The more mm-hmm. organized, the better, perhaps. Because uh, well. it's the doing of it that is the important thing. It is the That's... ritualistic aspects of it that is the important thing. And of course, there is an element of that to my current wizard business. Yes. If business it be. But where are you at with it? Well, um, it, it actually kind of connects to one of the reasons I don't usually talk about it, is that uh, I have found that, at least in my world, um, you know, listening to other people's takes on it, and, um, you know, I've never been a member of a church or any, any uh, similar organization, but... Um, I guess what I found is that, for me, it, it, you need to find it yourself. You need to develop your own personal relationship with it. And some sense of uh, ritual may be important to that. But, um, yeah, for me, like, there, it's, it's, I find it pretty um, impoverished if you, you know, if you're taking somebody else's word for it. And if I see. You're, and That's if you're, word with you a know, capital W there. <laughs> um, yes. the uh, the response to that might be um, a sense of ritual is a con- like a, a vague sense of ritual is a contradiction in terms because a ritual is only a ritual if you actually do it ritual- ritualistically it doesn't have to be vague I mean you can independently arrive at extremely uh, firm rituals if you so desire that's true but um, I, I, I personally that, have, that, have that not. Did, that is not what I expected that you meant by that, though. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, for me, uh, it, it has been fairly vague rituals for me personally. But um, no, it, like for me, it's more about contacting um, other forces than it is about doing. It's more about uh, a willingness to sort of be be led. And so the uh, go on. You. This is this act, this leads to like so a person who is of a uh, of a rationalist bent, since we sort of just leapt into this with both feet, it might be mm-hmm. good to backtrack and be like, why would you even want to do any of this? Um, what value does this does like uh, thinking of the world in spiritual terms? Uh, provide to a person and one of those is that it can as you were pointing out get you out of the way of your own ego definitely um, yeah the although i do want to i want to respond to that on a higher level by just saying like if you know if there is no obvious value to it then there's probably no need to pursue it you see what i mean like I I'm not I'm not looking to proselytize or whatever. Like if you don't have a spiritual compulsion, then there's really oh, yeah. no there's no need to force it. We're definitely not trying to get. I, I don't think that the point of this is to try to get people on board. Right, right. I, ju- I wanted. It's, I just wanted to clarify that. But it's like it, we, it, since you're since you're starting from a defensive posture, you know, being like this is a thing that you feel hesitant to talk about. Um, and then it, it's uh, it's worthwhile to sort of have a baseline discussion of why it's a, it might be a valuable thing to some. Right. Certainly not necessarily a valuable thing to everybody. Right, right, right. And yeah, getting out of the way of your own ego definitely is one. And just another part of it is like being willing to... Uh, it kind of increases your willingness to listen to your... Um, your higher aspirations, I suppose. It's Tell that, me more about that. Well, hmm. it's difficult to tell you more about that without getting a little bit more personal than I'd really like to. Uh, how how <laughs> can up, I pos- make up a story about somebody <laughs> with a similar issue? <laughs> I'll put it this way: I probably wouldn't have really gotten into making music if it hadn't been for me uh, discovering this aspect of myself. Interesting. So it's uh, 
I mean, people making music, uh, in, in, bleh, in terms of making music, like, religious feeling is really high on the list for reasons people do that. Right. And, uh, has produced some of the best music, in my opinion. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, has a higher hit rate than, than Love, <laughs> uh, which is another one of the all-time great musical motivators. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, but I, I, I'm, Unfortunately, I want to hear more. I still want to hear more about that. I want to. I want to hear about how. Uh, about how one connects the dots there. Like, um, is it about feeling that you are capable of more? Um, sort of. Is it about feeling it, that, it, that how the, about the limitations you placed upon yourself are bogus, or what's? Let's the deal? try this. It provides um, sort of another entity for whom you are doing it kind of a an uh. exterior a, an exterior audience with which you are always in contact that's certainly a, a thing that um a lot of artists talk about needing to have um there are artists who talk about writing for or for one person certainly mm-hmm. um as opposed to trying to write for an audience and yeah. of course there are artists who very deliberately write for a given audience um <laughs> But, uh, There's a Borges story that comes to my mind on this subject, actually. The one where um, someone's about to be executed by the Nazis. And um, he has, like... On the on the day before his execution, he, like, has a great idea for a play. <laughs> and so he prays to God that night uh, that he'd be given more time to be able to write that play. And so what happens is uh, the instant before he's about to be shot by the firing squad, time freezes. And like a couple of you know days without really being days pass until he realizes that what's happened is that his prayer has been answered, and so he proceeds to write and revise the play in his mind. Um, and the instant he feels done with the play, uh, he is killed. Mm. And so, so you know the obvious implication here is that God wanted to hear that play, and it's it's a play it's a play for him and God. And that's I it. see, I see. And God wants to hear your music. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I didn't mean that to have a mocking tone. If it had, if it had one, I'm, I'm just genuinely interested in the way this works in your in your mind. Yeah, sharing it with quote unquote God has some a feeling of mutual interest. Yes. Huh. That's super cool. That's super cool. I think that goes beyond what I'm capable of, of feeling. Um, although my religious feelings have always been more aspirational uh, than utilitarian, mm. sadly. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I, I feel like I want to sit with that for a second and and think about the implications of that. Um, give. Uh, Give, give uh, talk for a second. I need. <laughs> I need. I need to think about that. Here's one insight, an insight that right. I've had that I, I feel prepared to share. Uh, I, as I've shared on trucks in the past, the spirit that I feel the most intense connection with is the pink elephant Ganesha, um, and so I felt motivated to pick up a book or two about this spirit. Right. Sure. Um, and. I've, I've learned some interesting history about the way the stature of Ganesha has changed over time. Uh, this is, uh, to paraphrase it, it's like he began as a uh, kind of like a tribal spirit of a rather different, if related, character to the one he has now. Like now he's called the remover of obstacles, but in his original incarnation, it was more like if you didn't pray to this elephant correctly, he would make your life a living hell. Uh-huh. So it was more like, um, you know, he was the creator of obstacles, and if you pleased him, then maybe those obstacles wouldn't be so much of a thing. Um, sure. But, like, gradually, he shifted from culture to culture, and until eventually, uh, you know, quite amazingly, he reached the point where at least um, certain very popular sects of Hinduism 
kind of consider him as the primary deity, regardless of this being a figure who appears absolutely nowhere in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, and so the, the myth was invented that he may not appear in that text anywhere, but he uh, was the he was the being who transcribed it. Oh, right, um, right, 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 right. According to the diction of another another god. Um, and, like, some some will tell you that he's the creator of the current incarnation of the universe. So, like, you know, that's, that's quite an arc. Um, and something that kind of struck me is that, you know, even though you can obviously address that history in a very secular way, and uh, the, the book I read on this, despite being, um, you know, kind of clearly pretty spiritually motivated, um, it had, like, some stuff at the beginning and the end about the power of the belief in this entity and the benefits that it can reap. But it, it did address this history in a very secular way, and I found that tension pretty interesting. And um, what struck me was that this this course that the the spirit has taken actually does resemble um, a, a narrative about you know one deity uh, gaining influence in a in a within a field of deities. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, yes, you could read it as it being the political rise of Ganesha within the seven within the, within the actual <laughs> literal pantheon. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and I think that wait, the the what I took away from that is that um, the you know I I've always been a pretty secular person for the most part and. Um, one thing that has prevented me from becoming more spiritual is an inability to reconcile, uh, you know, the spiritual feeling with the ability to sort of explain everything away in a rationalistic uh, sense. And I think that having that realization made me realize that there isn't really any particular need to reconcile those two things. Like the 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 way a spirit can operate on you, even within a secular. Uh, way of looking at it is yeah. uh, is is not actually that distinct from what happens when you just start letting it take an effect. I mean, that's the uh... I mean, I, I I even has I because I've been I've been called out on using this very language recently. Like, I hate to I hesitate to call it a metaphor, but um if it's a good metaphor it's a good metaphor right mm -hmm. and there are a bunch of different metaphors that we use to operate uh in our lives because direct immediacy is actually impossible sure uh, which is like when you talk about you know neuroscience and how my understanding is that we that a lot of our rationalization is after the fact and a lot of our sensory input is intentionally blinkered because we would go berserk if we were actually having to individually deal with every bit of um, stimulus that we get. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of sorting and uh, narrativizing happens even pre-consciously. Like taking control of the metaphors that one uses to interact with the world around you in that way strikes me as even a net positive goal from the perspective of uh, that's my alarm going off one second <laughs> sure truck yep we're on pause you remember where you were uh, I was I was about to finish the sentence from the perspective of, but I don't remember what perspective it was from. <laughs> Take all the time you need. Uh, I'm going to assume that it was from a utilitarian perspective. Okay, okay. Here we go. From the perspective of uh, just dealing with the world in a way that makes sense to an individual person. Um, Shit. Ooh. <laughs> And because it's all about like, it's all about hacking one's own brain in a certain sense. Like we have in terms of our, both our physical health and our uh, lived experience, we have 
a limited, um, we have limited control over our own capacities. Mm -hmm. Um, and we find through things like what happens when a person takes a placebo instead of a real drug, what happens when a person feels cared for as opposed to is just given certain medicine, the mind body connection is so demonstrably permeable and that's also a factor in terms of what we're capable of mm -hmm. like our actual physical capabilities vary depending on circumstances and we can't actually force ourselves to do yeah uh, any of those things to, we can't force ourselves to be at maximum you know uh, we can but we can figure out ways in which our maximum can come out yeah um, and it you know doesn't have to be I'm going to lift this car off of my child with my crazy mother strength. Um, <laughs> but I think that there are analogs to that. Um, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, and we do that via story wrangling. Yeah. Via the application of metaphor. Um, or, you know, fuck it. Maybe like, calling it metaphor is in fact underselling it um, via the application of uh, ways of seeing mm. put it that way yeah metaphor is one of the levels that it operates on but it definitely uh, it probably isn't the phrasing someone would choose if they were in the thick of it it's not the is phrasing, there a way to, it's not the phrasing I would choose is there a way to t how, how would you how would you phrase it hmm Good question. <laughs> I, I guess I, 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 was, I was. Sorry, go ahead. I, I guess I would uh, frame it literally, you know, just as contact with a force outside of myself, and it is a force outside of myself. You know, whether it's whether it's a, a grand social narrative or it's an actual spirit, it um, you know, it, it there is something there that is outside of me. You see what I mean? So the ex the externality of it is the key thing for you. It's it's definitely a major part of it, yeah. Hmm. It's it's the externality, but also the way that externality uh, can speak very intimately to the to the internal side of things. Right. And I think it's I think it's telling as far as my perspective goes that I immediately jump to thinking of it as a retooling of subjectivity. I mean, um, it's, rather than a rather than a form of communication with the world. Sure. I mean, yeah, but you weren't you're not wrong in anything that you said. Uh, you've definitely described a, a part of how it all functions. Yeah. No. It's just it's just like I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm saying that like the that my impulse to frame it that way says something about me rather than about um, sure sure rather than about the subject because you know. My like immediate pathway out of religiosity when I was a kid um, was uh, realizing that all of the stories couldn't be right at once. Right. And this happened to me like at a relatively young age, um, and that if all of the stories could not be right, then probably none of them were. A part of my pathway um, into religiosity was realizing that all of the stories could be right at once. Oh, they, there's nothing stopping them. <laughs> oh, that's that's the uh, that's the evolution of thinking about uh, the canon, as it were, yeah. um, <laughs> where the canon is reality. Uh, Can I get where... to whatever like? far out shit you want right we got we got all kinds of quantum bullshit that we can lean on if we really want to yeah <laughs> i mean it's it's being revised by the day yeah uh but i mean but like that that was like my eight-year-old's understanding right of 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 the way that things work and like also um when we talk about this we have to deal with the whole um tranche of people and cultural forces for whom it's all received as is right and uh who use it as a weapon yes um, <laughs> and so uh 
one immediately, or at least for me, one immediately has to deal with that and to reject that. Yeah. And then That's definitely to... a part of what uh, drove me to handle it in an individualistic way. Yeah. Because, like, the works of um, religious institutions in the world are uh, self-evidently terrible, like, a lot of the time. Right. Um, not exclusively, but a lot of the time. Yeah. And the people uh, who are the most the people who are the most loudly non-religious are also pretty awful. What the? F did you whoa. see that? <laughs> it's what? a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> An obstacle uh, has been uh, removed by the remover of obstacles. Oh, uh, thank you, my lord. Whew. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think uh, that I th I'm going to tread lightly around the uh, around the elephant from here on. <laughs> um. <laughs> Remarkable. I, I, did we? Could we have just crossed over into into Oregon? The map. Is no, we've like, been in we've uh, been in Oregon. We we've been in Oregon for some time. So weird. We're going from Klamath Falls to Bend, which is a drive that I've taken. Um, Where were we before that? <laughs> <laughs> that had a, that really threw my train of thought all the way sideways. Well, you were about to. I think you were about to own some atheists, and then and then that happened, which I think owns the atheists <laughs> even more comprehensively. Checkmate, than that <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> than anything you could have done. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean. There, the problem, of course, is power, yeah. um, and the way that people in positions of authority operate, and the way that authoritarian institutions operate, regardless of whether they take their uh, authority from religion, from political philosophy, or from simply having more money and guns than everybody else. Yeah, it all boils down to the same thing, and the. Uh, the difficulty, of course, is salvaging what is good in the same way that, you know, we must salvage what is good from uh, from Marxist thought, <laughs> despite the fact that we've seen what it is capable of doing in when it becomes an authoritarian doctrine. Sure. Um, I guess I want to go out of my way here to say that, you know, n neither of us hold any animus toward organized religion as a concept. I do. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I I absolutely do. I um. How about this? Neither of us hold any animus <laughs> toward those who get legitimate value out of that world, and who for whom it is a productive part of their life and a source of community or whatever. Even if it's the tackiest, most fucking NRA donating church ever that you go to, you know what? You're fine. You're probably fine. You really got to stop speaking for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I have no problem, and in fact, I admire people who have religious, um, uh, who have re religious beliefs. Even people who have, like, very, as you say, standard mainstream religious beliefs. On the other hand if you belong to a conservative church and you're supporting them, then I do have a problem with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Fair and, enough. And, uh, as a pro as in the same, to the same extent that I would have a problem with anybody who's, uh, religious or political beliefs infringed on the, you know, safety and well being of people who I cared about. So, so there is that if you're a Catholic, I have some questions for you. Sure. Um, and that's not to say, but uh, that's not to say I think that if you're a Catholic, then you automatically support the Catholic Church and everything that it does. Because right. as a Jew who complains about anti Semitism a lot, that would be incredibly uh, hypocritical of me not to say unfair. Um, that being said, if you are a Catholic who does have an uncritical support for the Catholic Church and the and everything it does, then I have a problem with you. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm just trying to draw a line between, you know, two two things. <laughs> I know, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I, it's, it is, 
it is important to it is, it is unfortunately important to point out that uh um I don't want to be saying that my that, beliefs are better than anybody else's, I guess is the core of it. Yeah, and, we're, we're, except we're, for when it comes to personal liberty. <laughs> Uh, you know, there are some beliefs that I have that I think are correct. Yeah. Um, and, but the, the spiritual, as with, as with everything, like, you know, if we're talking about spiritual maxism, maxims, like do what thou wilt, but harm none is, uh, is a good one. Um, I respect your beliefs in so much as they don't infringe upon, um, my freedom and well-being essentially yeah, yeah like that's that's pretty standard but i i think the reason why we're at pains to point this out is because there is a whole rainbow of atheist shittery out there that is both personally repellent and uh <laughs> culturally unhelpful that i don't want to be associated with and i think that's what you were getting at yeah that and just you know as a non-atheist i guess is how I have to describe myself now. I also have to do that from the angle of, you know, the, the similar angle of, I I have this belief, that, but it doesn't mean that I think your belief is stupid. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that, I don't think that anybody expects that to be what you think. Right. Yeah. But... I also, I guess, like, I'm in a position where I have to sort of justify like my sort of co-opting a deity from a religion that I have no personal connection to. In fact, I mean if you really want to get fully critical about it like I'm I'm an Englishman. And yeah. There's a pretty fraught history there between English folk I was, and uh, I was like genuinely not going to bring that up because I thought it would be too much. I mean, <laughs> for us yeah. to discuss, but there's since like you, since you've opened it, yeah, it's that's a, that's a how do you justify that to yourself? Well, I justify it to myself by mostly keeping it to myself. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, that's fine, but like when you're justifying it to yourself by yourself, how do you justify it to yourself? Am I doing any because harm? It's, because it's clearly it's clear that you've had this thought. Um, well, I would say no. Um, someone someone might say I am. Um, I think if and you were... I, it, that case hasn't been made to me yet, so I'd be willing to hear it. But like, pr pretty much nothing anyone can say can um, uh, change the effect that this has had on my general outlook. You know, so it's like, you know, it, nothing it, it, it you can't, can it... say <laughs> can pull me away from my God. My God, nothing it... you can do. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I hear it, it you. Just, I hear like, you. It, the, poli the political side of it is totally important, but it's also, it, it feels tertiary in a way to what I'm actually uh, doing here. I feel like, I feel like if you were getting out there, if you put out a storefront and said, this is my interpretation of what Ganesh is, um, yep. and, you know, incident and join my church and give me money while I teach you about <laughs> Ganesh. Right. Or even like, here I'm going to teach everybody about Ganesh as if my take on Ganesh was the correct take about Ganesh as if such a thing were possible. That would be one thing. But you're not doing any of that. In fact, you're pretty much doing as close to the opposite of that as you're capable of yeah. doing. I don't think I've said a single thing about what I actually believe Ganesh to be on this episode and we'll just <laughs> we'll just keep it that way. I think that's probably for the best. I think that seems like a a thing that's between you and the elephant. And right. um I uh I I think I think that that's that that's where the cultural appropriation argument comes in. That's where the colonialism argument comes in. Um I think that if you are I think that everybody is allowed to use concepts and uh, behaviors which are helpful to them, even if their own ancestors didn't come up with them. I think that's what human cultural intercourse is. Right. Um, and we've and, seen that Ganesha has, you know, expanded and expanded his reach. Yes. And I will say that what you are doing is about 10 times less potentially problematic than white people doing yoga. And there doesn't <laughs> seem to be any, uh, any 
stop to that anytime soon. Um, that is an interesting aspect. The whole trend around um, taking Eastern spiritual teachings and putting strangely secular, vaguely kind of squeaky clean corporate language on them. It's aerobics. Yeah, I mean, it's mindfulness. When, uh, right, mindfulness, which is actually a religious... Uh, that's a fucking religious practice, which is now, like, medicine? Yeah. Um, in addition to being, you know, sort of corporate retreats, like, it had its own little song on Steven Universe. Um, and but, sort of the, uh, the kind of the complicating factor here is that there is, like, some useful stuff in those books, because it does go back to, you know, millennia of pretty smart teachings. It's just mm -hmm. the... Yeah, oh, jeez, I should really... Here we go. Whoa! Look at your cab! That's fancy back there, isn't it? What a fancy little cab you've got. <laughs> you could, like... This is my permanent truck. I've We've had that for a long time and never noticed. Whoa, you could, you could have, like, a party back in there. I don't think that you're back into that gas station. Oh, I'm backing into that gas station. Holy shit, here we go. I'll push anybody out of the way. Hmm... See, this is what religious conviction gets you. Pow! Uh, <laughs> I didn't even get fined for that. A disregard like for out. the rights of human beings. <laughs> well, this trip has already been blessed, so it's fine. And that stop sign. Oh, there sign. we go. Whoa, that stop sign has physics. No, tapping I'm, him with my trailer. I'm that, shocked. That gave me the, the fine. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter what happens to your cab. What <laughs> happens to your goods is what matters. Um, Where's the sleepy part? Oh, I can just sleep right here. Sounds perfect. Sweet. Swite. Um, that just drove what I, oh, okay. What I was gonna say is, uh, so like I have some experience, like in terms of, uh, in terms of like my experience with this kind of thing in pop culture, um, I always think of Alan Moore and Glaucon. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna fill in the uninitiated? Sure, Alan Moore is a uh, writer of comics and wizard. Um, and I, I use the word wizard advisedly, obviously, but, you know, he's the real deal. Uh, who um, decided a while back that he was going to worship um, a uh, minor Roman household deity called Glaucon, who is a snake with a beautiful, lush head of blonde hair. <laughs> um, and who is real, you know. Yeah. Uh, he didn't make Glaucon up. Uh, and it definitely has the character of, like, I'm going to worship the flying spaghetti monster then, right? Because I might as well. But for him, it actually seems to be, like, incredibly sincere. Yeah, no, he's made several, like, um, you can, listening to any of his spoken word albums in which this comes up, you, I think that you would have a difficult time disputing that he takes this as seriously as he takes anything, which is actually pretty seriously. Mm -hmm. Um... And he frames it in completely, like, uh, practical terms, I suppose, um, in that it's a source of creative juice. Right. Um, which may or may not be, you know, uh, which is, I think, you know, there are a bunch of different ways of talking about, like, getting in or out of the way of one's own ego. But, uh, God, that's like the number one thing that I admire about, or that I sort of admire about religiosity is the idea of just like not being the most important thing in your own life. Sure. Which is like, it, it, it's a terrifying thing to a certain extent. Um, but also like, uh, it, do, it one, does come with an affirmation, though. Like you, you remain very important because you're, 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 you are your own conduit to this thing. You yeah, know? it's not about you know, it's not about total ego death. E ego death. It's but it's it feels to me like for you just got an achievement. Never been to. I guess I visited. Oh, sorry, cities that was, in Oregon. That was an achievement progress. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Salem. I'm, I've taken the, the drive that we're about to take about eight million times in my life, so I'm going to be interested to see if it's how uh, much verisimilitude it has. It's a shame it's in the middle of the night. 
Um, ego death. But yeah, it's not a, it's not about ego death, but it does strike me as anti anxiety. Anti Sagan? Anxiety to a oh, certain yeah. extent. Yeah. Anxiety being an inability to move out of the way of one's own brain. Um and to uh to unclench. Like finding oneself at the mercy of one's own subject subjectivity when one's subjectivity is insisting on viewing everything in terms of giant robots fighting bugs on a regular grid um, is harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's, if only as a way to reframe the world. Because that, that's also like one of the... And if I can com also compare... Uh, holy shit. I was really gunning it there. No, I'm just, I'm, the the drive that you just took between me saying, oh, I've <laughs> made, taken this drive many times, that lasts an hour in real life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now we're in Portland. And this is a drive that I take fucking all the time because it's how you get back to Banning's Pie House or from Banning's Pie House to my house. And we're about to go over the... the um, so they represented all that as about one one they country pass. They really squanched it together, and you're about to go over the uh, the I five North Bridge crossing. Which, hey, we finally made it to Portland. It's a beautiful view out the left in real life, which and that's not exactly correct, but it's pretty good. They did a pretty good job. Yeah. Hey, there's some bridges and stuff. I'm, yep, absolutely. Not, let's take the cinematic view here. Hey, look at uh, that. They they did the Tilikum crossing. Very good, very good. That's a new addition to the Portland. Uh, skyline that is exactly how it looks and you can see all of the bridges in bridgetown this was lovingly done very cool yeah and slightly uh i feel like i just fucked myself <laughs> up in some way no no you're still good you just uh, don't I mean, want i was i was feeling vibrations in my controller that i can't explain and now i've taken the wrong exit the the it right one like was blocked okay. the right one was blocked off oh wow how about yeah, that? that was there was a genuine detour problem, like truckers presumably have to deal with in real life. And now you're gonna have to get on 84, get off 84, get back on 84, going the direction, and then go back to I-5 North. You think it's actually gonna make me do all that, or is it? Just I, that's like what your map. That's what your map is showing. I actually know how these highways work, and I know oh. that that's a pain in the ass. And I noticed that we've just added a half an hour of game time to our drive. How about that? Through the true simulation. Yeah. That is astounding. It looks like there's a serious yeah, problem going I'm on. Gonna, on I'm going to have uh, to go back the other way in a bit. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, we're talking about this really, for a little bit longer. The real question to me is where it's sending you. I mean, maybe... Are we going to Astoria? Is that where this is meant to end up? I will find out. I could open the big map and find out, but we'll because just find if, out the slow If way. we just... Given oh my the God, sort this of... is going to go on fucking forever. It is, yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> it's really fucking hard to get on off and on 84. Okay. That, that, that's a real we've run afoul of an environmental hazard. This is an amazing truck. Obstacles removed and unremoved. Yes. <laughs> it's because my rituals are too vague. I think it's because of of my flippancy. Um, <laughs> TBQH. Oh wow, we just went about we just took about five seconds to go 15 minutes. Yeah. This is really disconcerting. Uh, I feel like you were... <laughs> in the for, the, for the record, there, <laughs> in real life, there are, there are some ways to turn around on 84 that don't involve leaving the city and going <laughs> out across the yeah. Sandy River, which is what you're about to do. The biggest but, detour uh, imaginable. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I was like steering to the left. Everything is good there. Everything is going south in a real, in a real, uh, a real life, real life consequences kind of a way. Yeah. And I'm having a difficult time formulating anything smart just because I'm fascinated by what they're doing to. Uh, what were you in the geography. middle of saying? I feel like you were in the middle of saying something interesting. I might, I, I might, could very well have been in the middle of saying something interesting, but it is lost to me at this point. I was yeah. talking about Alan Moore, and then, um, and then I was talking, oh yeah, I was talking about 
Um, oh yeah, I was talking about how I view. I I think that there's a connection between the sort of utile side of religiosity and also the utile side of taking psychedelics. Mm. Um, in that it's a. Oh yeah. Cool, you didn't have to go all the way out of the city. You're just in Troutdale, the uh, farthest flung of the Portland suburbs. Um, they probably put this in specifically for this bypass experience. <laughs> There's an outlet mall right behind that bush, which may or may not be rendered. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? I'm making the camera go faster. There it is. Do you uh, see the mall? Uh... Yeah, that's kind of the uh, that that works. That's sort of that's sort of what it is. Kinda, yeah. It's yeah, like fake that's Walmart. A, yeah, no, they put a Walmart where the outlet mall is, but because um, there isn't, there's only one Walmart, Walmart in the entire Portland area, and it's not here. But it's approximately correct. That's good enough for me. Uh, uh, last yeah, I was I was saying I was saying that the. The sort of, and also they're putting out this range of antidepressants that are based on ketamine at the moment. Mm. Um, they're sort of ketamine like, probably actually just ketamine. <laughs> um, and uh, I think it's all about being, giving you an opportunity when you are stuck to recontextualize your story your existence your life right like what is because we we think about what is possible for ourselves based on our understandings of what the world is and those understandings are not complete because we don't have all the information ever even though we always feel like we have all the information and you often find that when you're put in positions where you have to do something that you don't think you're capable of doing you find that you're capable of doing it yeah um and being able to change the way that you think about what you are, what you do, without having to resort to either like frying your brain or being put in a dire life-threatening situation <laughs> seems to me like one of the uh, one of the benefits of communing with the snake or the elephant or the raven, who was my patron god when I was a kid. And I did have a patron god when I was a kid, and it was a, an acquired one. It was uh, uh, sort of uh, the the Raven story that uh, Northwest tribes had, because I went to a child psychologist who used a bunch of uh, vaguely Native American stuff in her therapy mm. in ways which I'm sure were, you know... Questionable. Questionable. In the same way that a lot of the other stuff that we're talking about was questionable, but that but it left sounds me... like they were also pretty effective. Um, I mean, certainly on my young brain, um, I took Raven on for realsies for quite some time. I would yeah. say, uh, which and it's something that I sort of left behind when I became a you know a teenager. And Definitely. When, when one becomes a teenager, one disavows disavows everything, and then eventually you figure out how to avow things again. <laughs> Definitely, but, just a bird with an obvious, like immediate, in-your-face spiritual potency. The Raven. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Fucks. Sake. Get, get over there, man. Get over there. You're gonna be so <laughs> fucked if you don't. <laughs> it's a one-lane thing. Are these Speaking guys, of experience, are these guys ever gonna go? Oh shit! Oh my god! What, what is happening? Are you are you legitimately just? N is the I'm, bridge just closed? Are you I'm, not I'm, going to be able to do this at all? I'm gonna muscle my way through. What this. a trucks! Yes. <laughs> oh my god! This is amazing. Can you even get through that barrier? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> are we on an infinite trucks? Excuse me. <laughs> That was my first and possibly only opportunity to actually run down a human being in this game, and I passed it up. I think that says great things about you. Well, we're we're off the grid now, buddy. I mean, I'm just doing what the red line says. 
This is turning into this something. This is astounding. <laughs> what the fuck? It was going to send me back the fucking way I came, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. The the I-5 North is closed north of um, north of the Moda Center, which is what you're looking at right there. So, like, I'm assuming that these are and there's, non-randomized there's the, there's the closed situations. Off, there's yeah, the closed I'm off merging thing. onto it right now. Yeah. I'm assuming that these are non-randomized situations. I could be wrong, like... But it seems to me that if there's road work, there's just always road work, right? Um, if there is, I don't so understand like how you the, would be expected to do this route, because I'm pretty sure that the roads that you would need to take to get to where you're going in an alternate oh, way fuck. don't exist in there's this... There's the police blockade. It's here to stop me. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm playing fucking Need for Speed Most Wanted. I have to hit the, the fronts of the cars, because that's where the engines are. Oh, no! Did you? There's, s- there's a helicopter. <laughs> they shut off. <laughs> they shut down this highway because there's a a fucking helicopter. No, no, no. Okay, there's, a, well, there's a huge crash right there, and that's. Oh. Okay, so what other route could I have possibly? Let me just make myself go a little faster here. What look other at, options at, could there possibly map, be? Look at your map. Look at your map. There's literally no other way in the in this game for you to get to where you're supposed to be going. What about uh, you could take you could have gone through 405 maybe. If yeah no if we're if we're at the point of the blockage that is what you would have you would have to do. Okay, well, turn around, Josh. I need you to be my co-driver because the GPS isn't actually going to help me here. Where no, am it's I? Not. Am I taking the right or the left? You're going to you you need the 405 exit right there. Actually, I am mistaken. The the GPS is guiding me. Yeah, I'll just zoom. Yeah. God, I, I'm the, this is a real baffler. Trucks has turned into a puzzle game, and I have, it's a good thing I already know the cheat codes. Okay, here oh, we are. Yeah, you're going to um, uh, Swan Island there. I need to remember <laughs> the button that called. summons the truck. I think it's this one. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! At last, we made it. <laughs> Divine intervention. <laughs> So were you expected then to actually win that? I guess I was expected to open the map and figure it the fuck and out. And figure out where the fuck you were going. That makes the game so much better, and we completely ignored it. And that's not it. That's not how we play this game. We're not in it for that kind of shit. Oh my god. Uh, well, here, here, here's the, here's the, the, the lesson to Rue that, that puts this whole thing together, is that be the divine intervention you want you're, to see in the world. No, what's the no, real no, one? no. It's your life may contain all kinds of surprises that you're not seeing because you're not looking at it correctly. The game <laughs> might have different rules, or might be uh, presenting different challenges and different obstacles to you. And maybe if you change your way of thinking, then more of it will become available to you. I think that works. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, hooray! We. <laughs> What a what a trucks this has been, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a challenging trucks in a number of different ways. A real journey. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Ah uh, well. I uh. It's a. It's not over yet. It isn't over yet. You still have to do the parking. Um. I uh uh. I use a lot of my sort of childhood religiosity to inform the songs that I wrote for a musical project with my brother that never got that never became anything but an album right um, but apparently I was talking to him and he's he has put together a musical based on our songs if not that musical and performed it oh my um, somehow like at the end of at the beginning of the year he hurt his knee to the point where he had to have surgery he like blew out his knee Cossack dancing at karaoke and the period post-surgery has apparently as far as I can tell has been a period of such insane productivity that he's producing like three plays at once now Jesus how Some does people, he do it? I mean he got married mm. and I think it's a good relationship <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you your match uh, sometimes your match is good for you yeah it's an inspiring thought uh, but um, I look forward to seeing that when it emerges. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. A little sad that you're not involved, I guess. But... I'm involved in the sense that I probably that I wrote a bunch of the music. Yeah. Um, and is there anything better than having already done a bunch of work, seeing it <laughs> become something better without you having done anything? That's been my. That was it, the. It's that was happened theater... to you. Yeah, exactly. That was theater of cruelty for me. <laughs> yeah. Ah, um, oh, there we go. Perfecto. Well. Reasonable. Reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part where you busted your way through a police barricade was that the reasonable <laughs> part? <laughs> god, I was really hoping I could run that gauntlet. Oh my god, what a what a what an experience all told. Yeah. Well, so that was trucks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna have the paradoxical feeling that I'm gonna realize that there was more stuff I wanted to say about this thing I didn't really want to talk about. But yeah. you know, we'll just we'll just let it be. We can yeah, and we can revisit it another time. Obviously, yeah. Um, I guess now the seal has been broken. Yep, and so this has been a special hour long trucks. And yeah, geez. Um, if there's more to say, then we will say it another time. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>